up, we have Noah Mayo. <laughs> Noah's being escorted tonight by his parents, Noah. Darling James Mayo, and his girlfriend, Paul Ruth Newman. <laughs> Noah is a varsity letterman in both football and track. Noah plans to attend the Texas State Technical College to become an electrical lineman after graduation. Mr. Noah, Noah Mayo! Mayo. Recognized tonight is Jody McGee. Jack is being escorted tonight by his mother Jessica and Tim Thornburg. Jack is also a member of the varsity football, baseball teams. After graduation, Jack plans to attend the Texas State Technical College in Marshall to become an electrician. Mr. Jack Morris. <laughs> senior tonight is Marcus Wright. And Marcus is being escorted tonight by his father, Marcus Wright Sr., Ketwana White Wright, and his sisters, Jayana and Americal Wright. Marcus has been a member of the varsity football team for two years, and he plans to attend SMU and become an entrepreneur. Mr. Marcus Wright. Final senior football player, and also for our first band senior, is Mr. Aiden Weaver. <laughs> Aiden is escorted tonight by his parents, Alan and Brittany Weaver, and his sister, Addison. Aiden is a four year varsity band member and a three year varsity football player. He plans to attend Louisiana Tech University and major in kinesiology and to become a football coach. Mr. Aiden Weaver. senior football boys a round of applause so they can be dismissed and go get ready for the ball game. And now for the rest of our band seniors. Our first one up now after Aiden is Roshan Allen. Roshan is escorted tonight by his father, Ryan Allen. Roshan has been a band member for four years. He's been in theater for three. High school leadership committee this year after graduation. Roshan plans to go to Texas A&M Commerce and study theater. Mr. Roshan Allen.
And our next singer we'd like to recognize in the band is Gavin Bigelow. <laughs> Gavin is being escorted tonight by his parents Brian and Tiffany Bigelow and his sister Krista. Gavin is a five-year varsity band member. And after graduation, Gavin plans to attend Tarleton State University and major in zoology. Mr. Gavin Bigelow. Deanna plans to attend Texas A&M Texarkana to study bilingual education and become a teacher. Mrs. Deanna Escobar. And our final band senior for tonight is Hannah Harper. Escorted tonight by her parents tonight. This is her first year in band, and Hannah plans to attend Texas A&M Texarkana to major in literature to become an author. Mrs. Hannah Harper. the senior cheerleaders. Our first senior cheerleaders is the captain of the cheer squad, Natalie Tucker. <laughs> Natalie's being escorted tonight by her parents, Valerie and John Tucker, and her brother Jackson, along with boyfriend Ethan Cota. Natalie is a four-year varsity cheerleader, and after graduation, Natalie plans to attend the University of Texas at San Antonio to major in biology and plans to eventually become a dentist. Mrs. Natalie Tucker. mascot for two years and after graduation he plans to attend college and become an ethical hacker and all and or a machine learning engineer I'd also like to recognize our cross-country seniors. Our first senior is Jamesia Gilmore. <laughs> Jamesia is being escorted tonight by her mom, Cynthia Jones. Jamesia is a member of the varsity cross-country team, basketball and tennis. After graduation, Jamesia plans to attend Texas A&M University and study computer science. Mrs. Jamesia Gilmore. <laughs> and the next senior we'd like to recognize for cross country is McKinsey Wharton. She's being escorted tonight by her mom, Jessica Finney, and her dad, Robert Wharton. 
Kinsey's a member of the varsity cross country team, volleyball, softball, and FCCLA. After graduation, she plans to attend Texas A&M Texarkana to become an OBGYN. Mrs. McKenzie Wharton. This is our next senior we want to recognize. He's being escorted tonight by his father, Manuel Rodriguez. This was Michael's first year to participate in cross country. And after graduation, he plans to attend Texas A&M University in major in ag education. Mr. Michael Rodriguez. tonight is Miguel Gonzaga. Owen! Owen! He's being escorted tonight by his parents, Krista and Miguel Gonzalez. Miguel is a four-year cross-country letterman. After graduation, he plans to attend college to eventually become a game warden. Mr. Miguel Gonzalez. seniors the best in the future. We've enjoyed the last four years in high school and we look forward to see what the rest of their senior year will bring. Once again, a round of applause for all these seniors. Congratulations. according to the rules and regulations of the University Intersplactic League. Regardless of the outcome of tonight's game, all the players have proven their, proven their willingness to work and sacrifice in order to achieve athletic excellence. We ask that you as spectators, you consider the time and effort each of these teams, coaches, and athletes have put forth. Cheer these young athletes, applaud them, but do not, through any of your actions, cause them to doubt the value of athletics. By your conduct, allow these young people to feel the pride in their communities and school. While your sportsmanlike actions may only play a small part in the outcome of this game, it will play a greater role in continuing to encourage competitive athletics. We also ask that you show your appreciation for the students who will be taking part indirectly in tonight's game. The cheerleaders, the bands, the pep squads, the students who have supported their teams at home and away. These young people play an important part in their team success. The officials for tonight's game have been mutually agreed upon by school officials. Their role is not unlike those of players, coaches, teachers, and school administrators. Without them, this game would not be possible. Their knowledge and application of the rules are the result of annual testing, years of study, and continual participation in clinics that further refine their understanding of the game. We ask as you as students, parents, citizens, to demonstrate the kind of respect for these officials that you would extend to any dedicated person in a position of responsibility. Once again, good evening and welcome to Brema Stadium for Friday Night Football. Uh, the referees for tonight are the East Texas chapter. Jeff Baker, crew, the red, wa uh, red water against Pruitt. The referee is John Baker, umpires Donald Dillon. Headline shot is Jeff Peterson. 
Line judge is Bart Bradley, and the back judge is Patrick Carter. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time and effort tonight. If we can all stand now for the playing of the school songs, we'll start with Redwater first, of course, followed by the Brema playing the school songs, please. Thank you.
please and remove uh, gentlemen remove your hats for a word of prayer and then remain standing for the playing of the national anthem by the blazing blue Barama band let us pray father we are so thankful and so grateful unto you for allowing us to be here tonight for the freedoms that you give us and we thank you lord that you'll bless the men and women that are fighting for our freedom right now lord i pray that you'll protect us and guide us and help us Lord, be with these young men as they play tonight. Lord, keep them safe. Lord, let sportsmanship shine on the field tonight. And Lord, we also are so thankful for your son, Jesus Christ, that died for our sins. Bless us now, and in his precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's broadcast, brought to you by the one and only Ben Bomber Productions. I'm Jerry Braddock, along with my partner Lance Luttrell, and once again, we've got Friday night, Paul Pugh of football. Yes, sir, JB. Bad senior night senior, at that. Senior night. A few fireworks going off. Fireworks here in the north end zone. Must have got that idea from Prairie Land last week. Maybe they gave us a few. Maybe I've said a few, you're right. <laughs> Might have traded them for a few scores there in that ball game. Right. That's, yeah, that's what it is. Number 52, Ben Latham. Number 52, Ben Latham. Number 45, Aiden Weaver. Number 5, Jason Kelly. And number 8, Black Hill. And the captains for the Dragon tonight is number 58, Easton Minter. Number 52, Andrew White. And number 88, Kyle Turner. But on a serious note, though, we talked about that before the game. You know, senior night is a big deal, you know, across the state. There's right. plenty of young men out there that are going to play their last football game forever. Yeah, never put them on again. Last time, you'll, you'll never put shoulder pads and a helmet on again. And I guarantee you, if you've ever been a part of a football team, you'll remember this night for the rest of your life. Sure, you know? ain't no doubt about that. A lot, of, a lot of the kids don't realize what it means. It's yeah, that's right. It's too late, you know. That's right. That's right. You know. But hopefully we see some of that tonight, you know. At least I was a kid that thought that you grew up here in the community and you're a part of Paul Pugh football. Last one you get to play here at Bramah Stadium. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How you want to be remembered. Yep. So tonight's matchup, Redwater comes in with a 3-6 and six overall record. Those three wins came earlier in the preseason. They haven't won anything since district. No, they were 3-0 and to start the year, actually. And sorry, the last captain for the Dragons is number 10, Pugh, of Carson course, comes Coleman. in with a 5-4 and four overall record. 4-1 and four and one in district with our one loss half. coming against Dangerfield. And the play must receive for an offense. Redwater won it and deferred, J.B. Interesting. Looks like your senior fullback, DeAndre Hill, is fired up here to get things started tonight. Yep, this is his last one here. Now he'll get to practice here for a couple, three or four more weeks, I hope. But Especially a kid like him. You remember when we made that state championship run? You know, he was just one of those super sophomores like that. It's hard right. to believe how fast time passes. It's already you know? gone, ain't it? Just like that. Yep. And just like that, that season as a whole, you know, we talk about it all off season long, and you wait for that time of year to come around, and here we are at the end of the season already. Right. 
after tonight you'll have played 10 ball games already. Wow, don't seem like it, does it? Don't seem like it. It seems like we were just getting started. And that's going to be the theme as we're discussing things tonight is this Paul Pugh football team right here rounding into form and getting into shape for the playoff run. Trying to get ready for that extra season. I think most all things considered, we're pretty much locked into the second seed. Uh, yeah, I think unless, unless uh, something, something crazy happens over yeah, that, that, that other district. Uh, we'll uh, it's it's number 11, Tyree Johnson, yep. and number 10, Noah Mayo. So here we go, Amari Johnson and Noah Mayo back deep to return. It's going to be a short, almost onside attempt fielded by Bradley Mines and eventually run out of bounds. Fielded it on the hop, didn't he? Good job being aware right there. Good hands. That's going to give us pretty good starting field position here to start the ball game. I didn't yeah, number 13, Bradley Mines. Reception there. Give us a first and ten for the Ramos. What the speakers are loud, aren't they? Awfully loud down there on that end. Goodness. How do you think their coaches feel? They're sitting, their coaches are sitting down there with it. it. Looks like Isaac Hodges is going to start still at center tonight. It means Wilson's going to be playing guard. First and ten. Green hustles him to the line. He's going to hand it off to his senior fullback, DeAndre Hill. Lowers his shoulder, and after a second surge, second effort, he's going to drive and have a good gain of six on the play. Good hard run there by DeAndre. And a good first down run for number eight, Black Hill for the Ramos. Latham back at the guard, right? Tackle made by number four for the Dragons, Malcolm Brown. So after that good hard run, that's going to set us up with second and manageable. This Pewitt offense here, we've seen good things from them here in most recent weeks. Oh, yeah. Uh, exploded for, what, 28 points in the fourth quarter last week? Yes, sir. Quarterback Hayden Green coming off his best ball game. He's going to hand it off to DeAndre Hill again. Move them, White Hat. And a first down run for number eight, Black Hill. Nice surge that time right there on that cut. Yeah. By number 50 for the Dragons, Cadence Pipes. You know, that's a question me and you have talked about, you know what I mean? I think, you know, we've at times, you know, wondered some of the personnel packages and stuff out there and who's playing what, but they, you know, they may have been, you know, saving Black a little bit here for the, the stretch run that's down here at the end. That's possible. So here we go, first and 10 for the Bulls. He's going to give it to Hill up the middle. Shakes and makes a man miss. Spins in the hole. Still on his feet, boy. He's going to have close to a first down, just a little bit short on that first yeah, carry. Good nine yard game for number eight, Black Hill. So here we go with second and inches. Pewitt's going to line up quickly and run the play. Redwater's Jackson defense hasn't even got it called yet. Latham Morgan. I'm going to give it to Tavian. Wrapped up. Hit from behind, but he's going to have a first down. Yes, sir. Redwater was barely lucky to get lined up on yeah, that one right there. They weren't ready for the tempo, was they? And number 23, Tavion Brown for a first down run for the Bramas. Noah Mayo brings the play in. First and 10. They've been setting up the dive. Let's see if we get the quarterback keep on this one right here. Green, he's going to keep it. Looking for room on the right side. Searches for the edge. Oh. Couldn't get that one block out there, could he? That's it right there. One block away. And number one, Hayden Green, the quarterback keeper around the outside for a short game. Your junior quarterback, Hayden Green, coming off arguably his best Dragons game of his career. Chris Langsdale. I know, I'm pretty sure it's the first time he'd been over 100 yards before in his career rushing. Right, and went for 155. Yeah. With another 67 through the air, I believe. So right. put him over 200 total yards. So here we go, under 10 minutes left to go here in the first quarter. We're gonna hand it off to Amari Johnson in motion. Looks for room on the outside. Cuts back, dances, makes a man miss, and another. Eventually spun down, and he'll have enough for a first down on that electrifying run right there. And number 11, Myrie Johnson, on a nice run for the Bramus. Brings up a first down. Go for the opposite way on that one. That young man right there, he'd be hard to get down in two-hand touch. Oh, yeah. Number 33 for the Dragons, David McKeever. Good first down run right there by your tailback, Amari Johnson. Green hands it off to Hill up the middle. Lowers his shoulder and plows forward to about the 16-yard line. Boy, he's hitting the hole hard tonight, J.B. And number eight, Black Hill right up the middle for the Ramos. A seven-yard gain. Wide open. 
That's what I tell you. Sometimes you got to wonder, you know, you never know, you know, 15, 18-year-old kid, you know, or especially 17, 18-year-old kid, senior night, you know what I mean, get a little extra juice flowing. Oh, ain't no doubt. Or there should be anyways, JB, if it means anything to you. Second. Second down here for the Bulls. Green hands it off to Brown on the misdirection play. Mm. Just barely tripped up. Yeah. In number 23, Tavion Brown for a small pickup for the Braves. Tackle made by number 12 once again for the Dragons, Cooper Thompson. Third and short right here. Well, that guy they got playing nose, pretty big old fella. 75 there. Pretty good sized kid. Figure right here, you got to give it to your fullback quick. Nope, quarterback sneak. And he's going to have well enough first down. Yes, sir. Under eight minutes left to go in the first quarter, and the offense at this point seems to be firing on all cylinders. Yes, sir. I was going to say something while I go by. I was going to try to wait till we scored before I said it. Yeah, don't jinx it. Right. But I was, I was going to say something about the penalties, too. Yeah, me too. So here we go right here. First and ten, just outside the ten-yard line. Johnson goes in motion. Green's going to hand it off up the middle to Hill, and he's going to squirm his way in there for a touchdown. Paul Pewitt, touchdown, DeAndre Hill. Couldn't have scripted it much better, J.B. That's how you want to start, right there. Yes, sir. Line up for two and give it to the young man again. Why not? Refs having to hold him up, getting lined up. Didn't work. Oh, misdirect. There's a miscommunication there somewhere in the yep. backfield. And the two-point conversion is no good. You know, they've had success running the buck sweep on the two-point conversion with Amari. But it looks like his fullback may have hit him on the side right there when he was going up the middle there. Yeah, it's some kind of miscommunication. So a six to nothing lead here by Pewitt halfway through the first quarter. And that's the slot tee. That's kind of how it's been working here in district play, minus the Denver game. Right. Now, question is, if you've been following us, especially off of last Friday's night, Friday's matchup, we've got to start off a little better on defense tonight. Yeah, this side of the ball is going to be the question mark. And, you know, to us, we always like to pay respect to everybody we play, you know what I mean, treat everybody, mm -hmm. you know, as a – Serious opponent, you know, but Redwater, they're looking to finish in last place here in the district, you know. Right. So, Wade, me and you were talking right now, you know, if, if you don't, you know, it would be troublesome if they, you know, ideally score more than 20 on us. Right. You know, that's just, that's just realistically yeah, speaking. Number one, Hayden Green to kick off for the Braves. Last week was the first time we faced a triple that option team. Dragons is number 21. May have gave us a little bit of fit. Number 20, Had trouble Jackson with Miller. Yeah. Tonight will be, you know, more versus a spread matchup, right. which we think we ought to match up better with. Kick fielded and returned up to the 35, 40 yard line. 25, Ryder Gibson in on stop for the Bulls. Yeah, 21, 21, Marquez, Marquez Jones. Jones on the reception of the kickoff. Freshman on the return. They've got, they got a decent little number of Ryder freshmen Gibson on here. For the Ramos. They do got quite a few freshmen on their roster. Though. I think three or four. I mean, and then what do we have? Uh, 15 seniors is what they had. So here we go. First and 10 for Redwater. Ball at the 41 yard line. Snap is back. Ball completed over in the flats. Cuts back and eventually going to be pursued. And that right there, that's exactly what we've been talking about. Was this is a better matchup for us because when you're playing the. 3-3 three, three sack like we do a lot of times. We have a lot more speed on the field. So that pursuit to the football right there, that's more That's right. more of our strength, I would say. Yeah, so somebody running it right there. Some of the double tight teams, triple option, of course, right there. Yeah. Quarterback takes a snap. He's going to hand it off to his running back. Tripped up in the backfield and eventually brought down. Five, Casey Kelly in the backfield causing havoc. And a tackle in the backfield, almost in the number two, James Bird for the Ramos. So here we go. It's going to bring up third and long after those two Jackson successful the, defensive plays. And this is right where you want to be right here.
Quarterback rolls left, steps oh. up in the pocket. He's going to oh. throw a duck. It's going to be intercepted over in the flats. Oh, Your center right there, Isaac Hodges, with the takeaway of the ball game. And that's going to set Pewitt with terrific field position here in their own opponent's territory. Yeah, nice turnover. Back to the number 51, Isaac Hodges. Good job right there at his outside linebacker spot just to go to the drop right there. Right. Eyes on the quarterback. Quarterback hit him right in the chest with it. We got a little pressure there at the end of it, right. too. Causing the bad throw. Yeah, McGee getting fired on the quarterback. So a little over six minutes right here, first and ten. Pewitt takes over for their second possession of the ball game. Handed off inside to Hill. Uses his hand to help stay up. Tackle right about the 25 yard line. For the play, uh, for the run right up the middle. He riding right behind him. 55 Jody McGee. For the Dragons. Clearing the way for him. Kiefer. Looks like it's going to be second and four for the Bulls. Green fakes off his fullback. He's going to be struck down in the backfield for a loss. And the quarterback keeper, Hayden Green for the Bramus. Lost a couple yards. After that loss right there, that's going to bring you up in a tough third down. You know you're in four down territory right here, right. though. Amari Johnson checks back into the ball game. Makai Perry is going to bring the play in on third down. Need to convert this one, JB. Let's see what we get formation-wise. We're going to split Perry and Johnson out wide. Green goes under center. He's going to hand it off to his fullback up the middle. DeAndre Hill breaks loose, and he's going to score. Touchdown, Paul Pewitt. Touchdown, DeAndre Hill. Number two on the night for your senior fullback right there. Yes, sir. Looks like he brought it with him this evening, JB. But, you know, he's running through them holes up there untouched all much. So, the big fellas up front are clearing the way for him. Sure are. we got to get this two-point conversion right here. Yeah. Make this a 14-point ball game. going to be a false start on the Bulls. It's going to back them up. I'm really excited. And hey, we have a flag on the way. False start against the Ramos. Good start offensively. Looks like they're going to be a long night for this Redwater defense, you know, like, like me and you have talked about. If you're having trouble with the dive, yeah, oh, you don't yeah. need to talk about much else after that. No, sir. We're going to kick it now, JB. Let's see if Hodges can boot this one through. White hat got going on down here. We get two fall starts. We didn't even line up yet, did we? Ineligible substitution. So this is going to back us up. Now we'll go for two again, JB. Take the T off the field. It looks like where they got a spot of that after the two penalties, right about the 13 yard line, 14 yard line. Yeah. It's going to line up double tight, slot T formation. Play action pass right here. Johnson goes in motion. Green fakes it, rolls out to his left, throws in the back of the end zone to Makai Perry. And that one's just going to be broke up. And yeah, the two-point conversion is no good. They had that one pretty well defended, JB. They, they were ready for that one. They were ready for that one right there. But, you know, if you got one play from the 14-yard line, I mean, right. you know, secondary's got to be alert. JB got Pittsburgh beating LE 7-3. Game, game of the week there on 96-9. Gilmer beating Pleasant Grove 21-14-0. District championship there. Mount Pleasant ahead 6-0. I think Mount Pleasant's a lock to make the playoffs yeah, too, I believe. Hayden Green on the kickoff for the Bramus. Miles beating Bowie. Back deep for the Dragons is number 20, Jackson Minner, and number 21, Marquez Jones. <laughs> Green kicks it off. It's going to be fielded once again right about the 25-yard line. Turns up field. Bounces back to the outside. 
be eventually tackled down right about the 45 yard line. Six Jack Morris in on the stop for the Bulls. Marquez Jones on the return again there for the Dragons. Yeah, number 21 for the Dragons, Marquise Jones on the return. Tackle made by number 10 for the Brainless, Noah Mayo. That's one thing I wanted to see from this defense tonight, especially facing a team that's going to be throwing it a little bit, is the takeaways, turnovers. Right. We got one there on that last defensive series. Let's see if we get another one right here. Quarterback is going to hand it off to his back behind him, and that one snuffed out well right about the line of scrimmage. A few games of interest, J.B. Art. And the Grand Slayer, seven to seven. Yeah, number mm. eight, Caleb Nerez. That's what's going to be interesting as we look forward. I mean, you know, it's Caleb it's not Nerez a lock that we're going to play true, but Dragons. it's pretty solid. But we'll see how some of these ball games shake out. Tackle by number right. four, Joey Green for the Bramus. Green in on the stop for the Bulls. Here we go, second and ten for the Dragons. Two by two look for the two by two look with the back and the pistol. Quarterback drops back, steps up. Oh. Hit Morris right in the hands, and he's disappointed he couldn't come up with that one. pass goes incomplete. Sophomore quarterback Brody Johnson on the attempt. He's a pretty good-looking kid, J.B. He's a big old, pretty good-sized kid. He's got good height to him. This isn't the quarterback they started off with, of course. They had a senior quarterback, I think, who had showed some promise and hasn't been with the team since the preseason, I don't believe. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. This kid right here is a left-handed kid, though. Like you say, he throws a pretty deliverable ball. He's just young. He's going to have to learn. But it's kind of like I told you, I've been watching some of these teams in this area for a long time, and anytime you see red water in the spread, that's what you want to see. Right. Looks like they moved a little early there, but Johnson's going to roll left, sets his feet, launches it down the field, and that one was well covered by Amari Johnson. Looks like he had pretty good running room over. And the pass goes incomplete once again. Bring it up fourth and long for the Dragons. He's wanting to throw it down the field, Hulk. I hear you. All these, all these incomplete passes stopping the clock, making for that long game. Under four minutes left to go here in the first quarter. Pewitt with another good defensive stand. Looks like it's going to force Redwater to punt. Back deep to return for the Bulls. Mr. Try me if you want. Try me if you want. It's a fake. Looking for room over on the left side. No, be eventually run out of bounds. Good, good heads up awareness right there by the punt return team for Pewitt. Noah Mayo and 12. Cobbins in on the stop. Cobbins getting up a little slow. Well, Redwater showing some aggressiveness, doing what they can to try right. to stay in yeah, this ball, ball game early. Run down to the well, Ramos, well, and 10. well, you got to lose, you know. Well, that kind of goes like you were talking about if you – had thoughts about, you know, if you were going to go for it on fourth down, the quarterback scrambles. If he turns up for five or six, then you're, you know, fourth and five, you know. But here we go. Third possession here for this Bulls offense. They're going to take over just across midfield, right about the 47-yard line. Green hands it off to Tavian, looking for room on the left side. Looks like quarterback got a little hung up that time. Somebody step on his foot. Yeah, I don't know what happened right there. Brown, the back area for the Bramus. Looked like he had trouble getting the ball to him. Tackle made by number 33. Tavian looked like he had a head full of steam that time. He wanted to try to get out the gate. Right. Hugh Springs, Legion Field, 6'6". Six, six. Interesting. Johnson goes in motion. He's going to hand it off to DeAndre Hill over on the right side. Jump cuts, makes the defender miss, explodes through the hole, and nobody's going to catch him. Touchdown, Paul Pewitt. Touchdown, DeAndre Hill. Yes, sir, baby. And there you go. There goes that man. And looking at it at the season overall, he may not have the yardage that he had last year. Probably doesn't have the carries that he had from last year going up until this point right here. But he looks like he's getting off to a strong start tonight. Looks happens. like James Bird's going to check in at the fullback spot. Johnson goes in motion. This time Green's going to hand it off to James Bird, and he's going to plow his way forward for a successful two-point conversion. So it's going to make it 20 to nothing here with three minutes left to go in the first quarter. That's how you want to start it off. Yes, sir. Get going at the right time, JB. That's all it takes. You and I both know. Fairland beating Hook 
What's that nut in Brayland a while ago? Well, somebody asked me how Hook would do if they matched up versus West Rusk. Yeah, that was me. Not well. Probably not. That uh, Hugh Springs and Allegiant Fields, that's an interesting one over there in that district. That's going to flip yeah, some seating, isn't it, if Hugh right. Springs can come out with a win? Right. Jones. West Russ beating. Keeping off the Ramos is number 51, Four. Isaac Hodges. 14 nothing over Quitman. Look like Hodges is going to get a chance to kick this one off. You get this ball game with a score right now, you might think twice about your quarterback kicking off, huh? Right. Don't need him down there running in no blockers tonight. No, nobody seeking him out or nothing. Boy, show his nice up here on the perch this evening. Football baby. weather tonight. Yes, sir. Gotta like it, baby. Playoffs one week away. Looming around the corner. Trying to round in the form. Hodges boots this one. Nice it's going to go over their head. Still be in play. Eventually picked up just outside the five-yard line. Cuts back over on the far side of the field. And eventually be slung down. Is that Makai Perry on the tackle? In number 20, Jackson Minner on the return of kickoff. So. Sets up the Dragons first and ten. We had little extras going on over. I was watching it. Yeah, I see that myself. Seven, but the, the thing that I like right there is anytime it's a bonus, bonus, bonus. Anytime we get good starting field position on defense, right? Especially a team like this, Redwater. Yeah. You know they've struggled to get. You know how many first downs have they got tonight? No, they've got. I don't the think first. they've got one. You know, so the farther you put them back in their own territory, that much harder it is for them to move it down the field. Right. So here we go, shotgun formation for the Dragons. Johnson takes the snap. He's going to hand it off to his running back. And be corralled down. Yeah, the front of the Bulls defensive line. Led by 55 McGee. <laughs> kind of being stingy up there this evening. The defense baby. is being a little stingy. Maybe a little nasty Bulls defense tonight. Yeah, you know. Tonight, yeah. <laughs> It's going to bring up second and ten for the Dragons. And for them, even though they're a spread team right here, they're looking to take their time in the huddle. Right, yeah. There's the, uh, Keep the ball on the ground a little bit here and milk some of the game away. Pressure look by the Bulls' defense. Johnson's going to hand it off to his running back once again, be cut down. It's Mint yeah, Mitter on the, the ball carry. Ball for the ten, no, ten, no, my O in on the top of the with a short gain up the middle. Tackle made by number 10, Noah Mayo, for the Ramos. Looks like Noah Mayo and Joey Green, man in the inside linebacker spots tonight. Yes, sir. That's a, that's a change, isn't it, JB? Well, you know, for Morris, filling in for Morris. I guess I guess that young man served went well. I seen him down there on crutches a while ago for senior night. Hope everything went well with that. Yeah, when you look at the defense right there, you can tell his presence has been missed. Oh, there's no doubt. So here we go. Third and nine here for the Dragons. Johnson sends a receiver in motion. They've got to get the playoff. Play clock is down to one. That's going to be a delay of game. It's going to back them yep. up even further. Or they get a time. They got a timeout. Yeah, All right, so Redwater takes their first timeout. Just over a minute left to go here in the first quarter. All is well here in Bramaland. Yes. Hewitt leads 20 to nothing over Redwater.
So here we go, third down for this Redwater offense. Johnson drops back, looks over the left side. That's going to be caught. They're going to call it complete, but it's still going to be well short of the first yeah. down mark. Once again, 55, Jody McGee getting good pressure in on the quarterback. Isaac Hodges on the coverage over there. 51, Isaac Hodges brings up fourth down for the Dragons. Pretty good coverage from his linebacker spot. So now they've already ran the fake, so they're going to be forced to punt this one away. Unless they got a better fake. Other I'm just trying to get excited about Amari being a low man back no, here, standing too. about midfield. Me too. Here we go. Punt is off. It's going to be a low spiral kick. It's going to take a hop. He's going to think about it, and he's going to eventually gather it up. Looks to get out of a tackle. That's going to be a face mask right there. So risky decision to pick it up, and it results in an extra 15. Right. There is a flag on the play. That could have been dangerous, though, JB. Could have been dangerous. Could have been spectacular. But at the end of the day, you get the face mask penalty. You got the 15-yarder. Kind of confused the Redwater kids when he picked it up. They just kind of like, wow. They weren't sure. It's pretty, it's pretty gutsy right there. I'm telling you. Just even, we have face mask against just the even that close to the ball, you know, because it can bounce and hit you or do anything when you're that close to it. So with the penalty, that's going to take us across midfield for good starting field position. Now, depending on tonight, we could see some twos pretty early, couldn't we? You would it looks think. like we're still going to have the starters out here to finish the first quarter. Green lines up under center. He's going to hand it off to his halfback, Tavian Brown. Ball on the ground. Looks like he was able to recover it. He got it back. Nice job by number 55, Redwater. Number he knocked it out. Brown with the fumble and recovery. It's going to be Lathan Morgan. He was a, a preseason highlighted linebacker for him. Yeah. But decent job by Tavian to fall right on it right yeah, there. Yeah, right back on it. It's going to bring up second down, second and six. 30 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Mayo is going to be split out to the bottom of your screen. Johnson goes in motion. Could be a false. There are offsides on them. Hand it off to your fullback. I think. So they got them that time on the offside. They've had a couple where they've been really close. Just like that's how 55 getting, the, getting his jump. Dragons. Oh, excuse me. False start against the Bramus. Oh, hey. Are they going to call false start on us? What do you call? No. All right, let's get it. All right, correction again. You know me, I like to, I like to give the white head a chance, you know. My partner, Lance, see, he may be a little more critical I, of him at times. You see, I was giving him a shot then. I didn't say nothing. I'm learning, JB. I'm learning. So second and very short. Just over 10 seconds left in the first quarter. Green hands it off to Hill up the middle, spins his way back into the middle of the defense, banging off a of defender. Oh. Amari Makala had number three all the way over here and put him in the Bulls water bottle, water cooler. Yeah, eight, Good job on a double team block right there. And I believe that's going to be the last play of the first quarter. It's going to bring up a new set of downs. By number 12, Cooper Thompson, the grandson of Dr. Kathy Allen. Pewitt leads 20 to nothing over Redwater, looking to capitalize and put another score on the board. Give us some more score updates. Let's see, Hugh Springs and EF still 6-6. Six, six. Harmony and Winona still 0-0 zero, zero in the second quarter. So Tatum finally got back 7-6 over Sabine. Wasson 28 nothing over Diana. Maryland still beating Hook 7 6 start to second. Dangerfield's up 22 nothing. Them Bulls up 20 nothing. Grand Slim beating Art 14 7. Mm. West Russ beating Quitman 21 nothing. Winsboro beating Pottsboro. Winsboro beating Pottsboro. Where's Winsboro going to finish? I don't know. Them boys you still got Pottsboro in there, so Winsboro going to finish third or fourth? Them boys from Timpson still rolling. Mile took two score lead over Bowie. Well, 
So according to our statistician, statistician up here, DeAndre Hill, what's he got, nine for 121? 121, three touchdowns, two or three touchdowns, two touchdowns. Johnson in motion, going to hand it off up the middle. Balls look like it came out on the ground again right there. And this Bulls, Bulls offense right here, that's two of them. Been fortunate to fall on top of. With a short gain right up the middle for the Braves. Pittsburgh 14-3 over Liberty Alu. Yeah, we're beating Pleasant Grove 21-7. Be interesting to see what Pittsburgh does down there with former Puett coach Abram down there mm -hmm. as they get rolling. That Harmony Winona game must be a good one. Zero zero. Defensive ball game. Two receivers split. Green keeps it off his fullback fake. Got green and green grass in front of him. Cuts back, makes a defender miss. Stiff arms another one. And be eventually tackled right about the 20-yard line. Yeah. Number one, Hayden Green with the quarterback keeper around the outside for the Braves. JB, I've been, getting the, I've been watching number 11 for Pia Damari the last couple of plays. Yeah, the tackle made with by his, number three for the Dragons, Court Tittle. With his blocking. He's taking a little pride in his blocking, I think. That's got to say something right there where, you know, your tailback, the fastest player you got on the field right there, when he's out there giving his all blocking. Yeah. It's a big deal right there. So here we go. Two receivers split again. Green hands it off to Hill. Powers his way forward. Move him on that. Enough for a first down. Yeah, number eight, Black Hill. With a first down run for the Ramos. We've seen some more from... Offensive coordinator Coach Cumro tonight with his multiple formations. Yes, sir. One and two receivers out at times. We're going to see it once again. Hill and Brown are in the backfield. Green's going to drop back, throw this one to the back of the end zone, and this one's going to be pass interference on Redwater. And the pass is thrown to Myrie Johnson. And from where the ball was spotted, that's going to take us right just about down to the two-yard line, isn't it? Hey, and you know, I, I hate to say it, I was just about to call right there. Is this the time you throw that jump ball to Amari right yeah. here? I thought it was pretty well defended today. Ah, you got there here early. Pass interference against the Dragons. Well, Amari, Amari jumped up for it, and then the defender just ran into him right there. Just Yeah. Good call. We'll take it. Looks like we may start seeing some subs working there. We got Cobbins checking into the offensive huddle. <coughs> Just over 10 minutes left to go here in the half. Get it figured out down there. White has trying to get this one marked off right here. This crew right here, they have they been working together all year long? <laughs> Maybe their first time. They're supposed to have been JB. You know that other district over there we're going to meet in the playoffs. That Grand Slam Bunch, they've been playing pretty good football here lately. It's going to spot us right at the two-yard line. With a first and goal, so four shots to get it in on two yards. Feeling pretty good about your chances. Right. Wilson takes over at the center spot for now. Noah Mayo split out wide along with Cobbins. You figure you got to bang this one to your fullback, right? Yes, sir. Green goes under center. Back judge oh. is going to blow the whistle and stop him. Wide has that to get set. So is Hill going to get his fourth touchdown of the game here? Yes, sir. And hand it off to him. Lowers his shoulder. High steps to the back of the end zone. That's going to be touchdown, Paul Pewitt. Touchdown, DeAndre Hill. So four touchdowns there for your senior fullback on senior night. Pretty good start, huh? Back to the slot tee for the two-point conversion. Green hands it off to Hill over on the left side. And he's going to find his way in for the two-point conversion. And that's going to make your score 28 to nothing here early in the second quarter. And Black Hill in for the two-point conversion is good. Having her way with him, JB. Well, now look here. That's exactly right. All is well in Bramaland. This is how we kind of figured tonight to go. Looking to round our way into playoff form. 
Now, looking at the scores, too, maybe Prairie Land's got a little something coming on here at the end of the season. Might, find a little Might something. come out and win versus Hooks. Give us a ball game. Sure got them believing over there a little bit, I think. I don't know. That's just, that's just my little personal opinion, too. When you see those teams like Prairie Land and, and Redwater, anytime I see them running the spread, I get more excited. You know, you look at a team like Chisholm, you know what I mean? Anytime, you know, it's like you say, you start running, you start controlling the ball, running a more, you know, ball control offense. Yeah, you give yourself a better chance. Give yourself a better chance. Shorten the game, less possessions, and that's right. where you start not beating yourself. Right. You find out how much you win. Right. Now, some of these schools around here, you know how it is, you know, Dangerfield, you know, if you win the four-by-one relay, you can run whatever you want to run. JB, they had four yards in the first quarter. Stingy defensive effort here tonight. tonight. Defensive coordinator Coach Mason bouncing back. Yes, sir. Probably had a good week of practice with the young men. Hodges set to kick it off again. This is going to be a high kick fielded right at the 20-yard line. Cuts up field and be tackled. Is that the kicker on on stop? That was the kicker. Kicker slash linebacker slash center slash split, slash split in at times. At number 20, Jackson Minner for the Dragons, the ball carrier. On the yeah, those those are kind of football players, like you say, especially here at Paul Pierre right here. You got to have those guys. You got to have them. You got to have them. You know, got to have them. Utility man. That's it. That's it. And what is it, this level of football right here, you know, you, you know, kid like that right there, you got to be done what's asked of you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Boys, Redwater Bunch needs need something positive right here. It's, it already ain't looking pretty for them. But. Pistol formation. Johnson looks to take the snap. He's going to hand it off to his running back and be swarmed up by Pewitt defense. Number 20, Keidra Calkins in on the stop. Where's that young man being, JB? Nice to see him. In number 20, Jackson Minner, the ball carrier for the Dragons. Looks like no Nix is in there at the nose. It's not a bad looking front right there. No. Kelly Nick Hawkins, Hawkins on the tackle for the Ravens. Kelly. Tackled for a loss. Going to bring up second and 11. Pistol formation again. Johnson takes a snap. Looks over on his right side. And that one's going to be caught on a curl route. Caught by Jackson Minner. In the passes, number six, Jack Morris, in on stop. Cody Johnson to number, number four, Joy Green. Nice little throw and catch right there from Still the Redwater ball. offense. Tackle made by number four, Joey Green, and number six, Jack Morris for the Ravens. Under 10 minutes left to go in the half. Pewitt leads 28 to nothing over Redwater. Dragons looking for their first first down of the half. They may get it right here. Going backwards five yards to get one. Two receivers to the top of the screen. Johnson looks to take the snap. That's going to be false start. Something. It's going to back them up. They've been close to a false start a couple of times. I think they should have, you know, almost yeah, called it on a couple of different plays. Right. Five yard penalty. They're by no mean in sync, JB. That's going to hurt them on their first down chances, too. Yes, sir. That's what me and you talk about, especially when we're talking about our offense. Every penalty or every positive or negative play, when you got four downs, it's almost like a like a hand of poker. Right. And with every positive or every negative play, your hand either gets better or worse. Yep. And like you say, you go from third and inches right there, you can run quarterback sneak twice. Right. To now, you're looking at third and six. And probably going to put the ball in there. Johnson hands it off to his running back up the middle, dragging his way forward, and a flag comes in late. It's going to have to be a face mask right there where it was thrown at. 20 Keidra Calkins once again in. Hit number stop. eight, Caleb Marys on the ball carrier. There's a flag on the play. After that penalty, that's going to give him a first down. Yeah, we have face mask against the Bramus. Gives the Dragons a first down. That's one of them hustle penalties there, though, JB, or playing penalty, you know. Now, right here, if you want to coach it hard, of course, like you say, this is where you got to start stiffening up right here. Right. Across midfield right here. Don't give them any hope. Right. Keep control of this ball game. Johnson 
Looks to throw over on his left side, and that one's going to be well contested. Makai Perry on the coverage. Looks like that may be one of those RPOs right there. Yeah. They're just not very. They're just not very fluid, but not very very smooth with all their stuff. Like you said, it looks like there's a false start nearly every play because you know they don't fire off the ball the same, not in sync. Quarterback sometimes like he's almost waiting on the snap. You know what I mean? He's almost backpedaling already, dropping back. So here we go. It's going to bring up second and ten after the incompletion. Two by two. Sends a receiver in motion. Quarterback's going to hand it off. Oh, nice block. And he's going to slip and fall down. That's going to bring up third down. JB, they had to see over there. Something Austin, interesting about the way they run jet. I watch it during pregame. They run jet motion, or they run jet sweep, and they pull the guards the other way like a false key. Huh. You know, and that may be setting up something for the quarterback to keep it right there. Right. But normally, you don't see them just, you know, run jet sweep and pull the other way. Right. JB, it looks like that coach held true to what he said in that preseason article we read about kids only playing one side of the ball. Look, they got the whole defense over on the bench sitting down. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, they're, you know, just outside of Texas Channel right there. They could probably have that, you know, luxury right. to do so. Right. So here we go. Johnson sends a receiver in motion. It's going to be trips to the far He's side. Get it off. Delay. I'm going to call another timeout. Yeah, we have time out of the field. It's going to be Redwater's Dragons. second timeout of the half. Just over seven minutes left to go. Pewitt leads 28 to nothing over Redwater here halfway through the second quarter. Third down here for the Bulls. Find a way to get that stop. Shutout should would, sure would be nice. It would be nice. Now that being said, it's hard to do four quarters, especially when you find your way in a ball game like this where you're going to have some twos playing. Sabine putting it on Tatum, 20 to seven. Mm. Kind of interesting. Tatum's ranked what top ten? Seven. With a win over Dangerfield, and then Dangerfield beat the brakes off Sabine, right? Right. <laughs> what do we say? The more we get through the season, these 15, 18 year old kids, you just don't know sometimes. Dangerfield, 30 to seven. Hooks went home and started taking care of business, 20 to 14. Hooks. Art and Grand Slings, 14-14. West Russ, 28-nothing. Winsboro, 21-7. So here we go, third down for the Bulls defense. I think they'll test the secondary right here. Look how, they, look how they're playing. Oh, we're coming with some heat. Ball so oh, blitz there by Joey Green right up the middle. Big time sack. Yeah, baby. And you called it right there. Do you see how they had that prowl kind of look? Right. Defensive line wasn't even up there on the ball. Four, 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 four yards off the ball. The ball. Interesting little wrinkle right there from defensive coordinator Coach Mason. Hey, whatever works, baby. What just happened? That was dialed up the pressure and was able to get home. Big play from Joey Green. Redwater set to punt it oh. away. This one's going to be a little shorter, higher punt. It's going to take a bounce and roll into Pewitt territory inside the 20-yard line. So Pewitt will take over. Just over six minutes left to go in the half. With a four-score lead. Let's see who comes out in the offensive huddle right here. Eight. I see some ones. Donovan Jervis. Oh, no, that was a couple years ago. Sorry. <laughs> Brother Tim down there, he's way back. He is, huh? 11 years ago. Yeah. Senior night, bringing back all kinds of memories for all kinds of folks. I guess so. So here we go. Perry and Johnson are split wide. Green goes under center. He's going to keep it off his fullback fake. Hurdles over a defender. Ooh. Eventually be... Blasted down. So, yeah, number one, Hayden Green, the ball carrier. You see your tailback keeper on the outside. You see your tailback blocking in. He pushes man out of bounds. Yeah, I don't know. I just kind of held my breath. Anytime the quarterback, you know, when you when you decide to Dr. hurdle, Kathy Allen, you don't need to leave your feet. Most time doesn't result in anything good. No sir. You got to be a special kind of athlete. Yeah. I was always thought you leave your feet. You can't do nothing in the air. You're just there. So here we go. Back to the slot T formation. Second down here for the Bulls. This time he's going to hand it off to Hill. 
fights his way forward to about the 24-yard line. In the gray black hill, right up the middle for the Bramus. Tackle made by number 10, Carson Bowman, and along with 75, Peyton Wardrop. Be, we need a big chunk play, man. We ain't had a big chunk play in a long time. You know, I don't know how many, how long has it been since one of our running backs ripped off a 50-plus yarder. Got to go back to decaf with Bird, maybe. Green under center. He's going to hand it off to his fullback heel. Drives his way forward, and he'll have enough for a first down. Moving wide hat. That's what kind of night it is right now tonight. You know, you got third and yeah, six, and you can hand it off on the dive and get all of it. First down run for the Ravens. Like you said when the game first started, if the dive's working. Tackle made by number 21 for the no, Dragons. Everybody, everybody feels how they want about the slot team, you know, good or bad. But if you can't stop the dive, it's going to be, you, you, ain't got no, you ain't got no you know, chance. That's a long night. That's where it all starts. Yes, sir. Johnson is going to get it this time, looking for room around the edge. Puts a hesitation move on. Green grass in front. And eventually be slung out of bounds. Right about the 46 yard line. Larry, Larry Johnson, the ball carrier. I thought I was going to talk us into one there. Gives the Bramos a first and 10. Now, right there at the end of it, right there, may have been a few words spoken. Oh, and yeah. that may have got Amari fired up right there, and I'd be careful with that. It's been a little chippy out there this evening. There's been quite a few extras going on. Under five minutes left to go in the half. Pure with a four score lead. We're going to hand it off to Johnson again on the wide side of the field. Cuts it upfield and be brought down for a gain of a yard or so. Oh, got a little. Number 11, Myrie Johnson. I told you the extras is going on out there, JB. Let's see who gets it on this one. Ball here for the Bramers, or is a flag on the play? That one right there come from the back judge, like you said. Yeah. It's going to be a matter if he's seen the first action or the second action. Normally it's the second. It's re retaliation the one that gets it usually. Yep. Gonna be on Redwater. Then we have a personal foul. Dead ball foul, personal foul against the Dragons. That worked out the way it was supposed to. That's gonna be 15 yards added. Ball spot at the 30 yard line. Hand it off to Hill inside on a trap. Shrugs off a tackle. Looks to pick up a block. Shimmy shakes and eventually be brought down inside the 15-yard line. Yeah, got him behind. Finally caught him. And once again, Black Hill on the carry for the Bramus. Defender had to hesitate there on Noah Mayo's block, and that's about the only thing that held him up right there. Right, for the guy from the defense lineman to run him down. Another set of downs here for this Bulls offense. Same song, different verse so far. Sure has been. It's going to be first to 10, ball spotted right about the 13 yard line. Quarterback looks to turn and hand it off to Johnson. And What's going on there? They just, he just didn't get it to him. That's another. 40 is some kind of excited for Redwater. Maybe his last game tonight, Hulk. Let's see. In the yep. in green. Yes, sir. Tackle made in the backfield. Can't blame the young man. Got a reason to be, don't he? That's it. That's it. Last one. Yes, sir. Got to play like you might never get to do it again. Yes, sir. Tackle made by number three, Court Kittle on the play. Oh, look, he <laughs> so <laughs> lost the yard right there. <laughs> 40 wasn't happy. He didn't get called for the tackle. Two <laughs> receivers split. Green hands it off to his fullback heel. Lowers his shoulder. Oh. And they've got him wrapped up and twirled up. Whew, that, Glad that, to see he's all right on that yeah, one right that there. Is, that didn't look real yeah, good. One, one young man had his ankle down there. Another man folded him up. Right side. Tackle made by number 33 for the Dragons, David McKee. That's that right there. Ian. We're going to be looking Carson at about third Norman. and nine. So two ways to think about it here, Lance. Do you got two plays in the bag to pick it up, or do you want to go ahead and throw your pass right here? He's going to run it again twice, I think. I think you run it here. I wouldn't, I wouldn't risk throwing it. No. Go ahead and get, get something out of it. Get half of it at least. Right. Slot T formation. 
Green keeps it, looking for room on the left side, lowers his shoulders. He can eventually be out. spun. Touchdown. And they're going to be touchdown, Paul Pewitt. Touchdown, Hayden Green. Yes, sir. Fourth touchdown in two ball games for Hayden Green. Yes, sir. That was a nice run there. He had pretty good vision on that run. From where we're sitting at, you could see the hole opening up. Most of that right there was effort. Most right. of that was just all effort right there right. from your quarterback. So fifth touchdown of the evening. Pewitt offense looking to pick up two-point conversion. James Bird in at the fullback spot. Looks like the back judge, he's going to hold him up. No, we're missing a player. No, maybe not. He's going to make sure everybody's lined up. Linebacker walks up in the gap. He's going to hand it off to Bird. And looks like the linebacker pressure right there, that was just what they needed right there to stop that one. And number two, James Bird, the two-point conversion is no good. After the unsuccessful two-point conversion, Pewitt leads 34 to nothing. Just over two minutes left to go here in the half. Pittsburgh's up 24-3 now, JB. Might be putting it together. Might be coming together over there. Be interesting to see their playoff run. I think, gonna I, think, I think the way they've looked at it, too, they're going to finish third. I was going to say, it's going to help them a whole lot if they do finish third and don't get to fourth. Not fourth, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the difference between winning the playoff game and going home. Mount Pleasant's up 27-7. Surely a... Uh, Back deep again for the Dragons is number 20, Jackson Minner, and number 21, Marcus Jones. Let's stay stingy here on defense. Off the sure. Ramos is number 51. Sure. Let's pitch a shutout Isaac here in the half. That would be nice. Shutout should, sure would help the, the totals, point totals on the right. year. Help out your average. Hodges set to kick it off for the Bulls. Get the hold to this one, fielded at the 20-yard line. Looks like it's going to be 20. Minner on the return. And number 20, Jackson Minner. The ball carry on the reception from the kickoff. Covered pretty decently that time. by number 10 for the Bramas, Noah Mayer. Looks like starting right tackle, Braylon Nix is getting a lot of action on defense tonight sure, compared to his uh, season totals. Right. Hey, when you talk about developing those guys right there. There you go. You think these snaps ain't going to pay off for that young man two years down the road? You know, next year you go look up and he's your starting nose tackle and you say, hey, look back at that game right there. That's yep. where he started playing it. <laughs> Quarterback Brody Johnson looks to take the snap here on first down. Low snap, handled well, chunks it deep down the middle mm -hmm. of the field. He's just getting rid of that, JB. He had such fire on him from Joy Green and and – Bird, he had to get rid of that. Cobbins was in so good, good position. Put on quarterback by number four, Joey Green for the Bramas. One thing about all them incomplete passes, slows the sucker down. But I think this is just a testament to what me and you've been talking about. We match up with an offense like this better. I mean, we know, you know, granted, Redwater, you know, right, not all that great here, especially in district play. A team like this right here in the spread right here, we're going to put pressure on you. Oh yeah, for you sure. Know? For sure. With that three down look, we're gonna bring we're gonna bring linebackers. Second and ten. I'm talking about bringing a bunch of them too. Johnson hands it off to his running back. He's got a crease. Green grass in front of him. And that one right there is gonna be eventually tackled by Tyrone Collins at the 45 yard line. That's their best, and that's best really play of the evening. Jackson Minner from their the most successful offensive play so far. Yes, sir. Tackle made by number 12, Tyrone Collins. Two receivers left. Pressure look from the Pua defense. Miller's going to take it again. He's going to bust a seam right up the middle of the Pua defense. Zigzags his way downfield. And be eventually tackled. Yeah, 20 once again. Jackson JB, Miller when you, when, you send, when you send all that pressure like that, when they break that first line of defense, there's nobody there to make the tackle. What was even worse about that one was, looks like we weren't quite lined up. We were tapping defensive linemen, trying to get them to go inside, outside. You got to be set on defense, first and foremost. Right. You got to be lined up. 
And Redwater trying to snap it a little quicker. Here we go again. Looks like we're going to send more pressure. Getting lined up. Minner's going to take the handoff in the backfield. He's got a seam. Lowers his shoulder, and he's going to be in for a Redwater touchdown. In for the touchdown for the Dragons. They found something they like there, J.B. Yep. With number 20 running it right there. Yep. Well, they're just getting they're just getting past the first initial line of pressure is what they're doing. Yep. And that's what you say. Everybody loves to be aggressive in blitz right there, but if you don't get home. Right. Carson Bowman set to kick the extra point for the Dragons. My goodness. Great water running one late. late. We'll take the third time out. Out on the field, called by the Dragons. Redwater may not be used to kicking extra points. May not. Couldn't use all them timeouts up, though. They've they used do. the third and final timeout here in the half, so with a minute and 39 left to go in the half, Pewitt leads 34-6. to six. Hey, I like this right here, though. Both teams just stayed out there and we're going to play it. Maybe we'll get a block here, take it all the way back. Hadn't had a block all year, have we? I don't believe so. High snap. Oh. That one right there looks like it almost a piece of it there. Isaac Hodges, if it was. Yeah, the extra point conversion is no so good. So it's going to be failed. Pew at least 34 to 6. And there went our shutout. Yep. Unfortunately. But you're still right where you want to be. Right. Ball game well within control. Yep. Hey, give Redwater a little credit there, too, JB. They found something they, they like. They found something they like right they there. They just kept running it. 20 right there showed some explosiveness. Right. Harmony finally scored on Winona's 8 to nothing with a minute left in the half. And EF finally stepped it out on Hugh Springs, 26-6 EF. And in Hugh Springs, too, I think. Wascombe got a 50-burger before half. Ooh. Diana's one win they had in the last three <laughs> years was short-lived. <laughs> short-lived. And number 10 is kicking off for the Dragons. Carson Bowman. Back deep for the Bramas is number yep, four. I hate to laugh at that so hard, but, but, you know, they had the losing streak there for years, and you finally break it, and then you look at the schedule, and you think, well. Job number two, Wascom, next game. <laughs> it was nice while it lasted. Here we go, onside kick attempt, poorly handled by the return team. And Redwater's going to take over with an extra yeah, possession here to finish off the half. The, the, the Buick kids were just waiting on the ball to come to them there. It took a funny bounce. I mean, it did, but it just. You got to go get that ball, though. It wasn't handled well. You got to go get that ball. And those are some of the little things you see sometimes in a blowout game. But I think more than anything, me and you being two old bulls like we are, that's what we want to see tonight out of this team. Even though it's senior night and it's Redwater, you know, it's a little bit of urgency. Right. Because next week it's do or die. It's, it's one and done after that. You know. Next week after, you know, when the playoffs start, there's no more my bads or do-overs. Right. Or, you know, no, hey, we'll get them next week. There's none of that. Right. You get them in the gym next week where you'll get them. So here we go. Johnson takes the snap, play action, drops back, throws it deep over the middle of the field. Got a receiver. Oh, nice play and by And that one's going to be broke up by Tyrone Cobbins. Nice play by Cobbins. Yeah, receiver nice. almost had a step on him, but he did a nice job recovering. Tyrone Cobbins for the Ramos. Hey, and look here, this is what me and you talk about when we, you know, just our little opinion about it. Like you say, you start watching some of these teams in the area. You had success handing it to 20 right there. Then you want to take a shot deep, you know. Right. Let's see if they go back to the run game. Pistol formation. Johnson, he's going to hand it off to Minner in the backfield. This one's going to be defended a lot better for a short gain of two to three yards. Well, we, won't, we wasn't blitzing on that one, JB. We wasn't blitzing on that one. And Redwater doesn't have a timeout left, so just okay, over a minute left to go in the half. Third down. Hawkins. 20 Hawkins in on the stop for the Bulls. Big third down for this Bulls defense. Johnson, play action, rolls to his left, throws it downfield, and that oh. one's going to be just out of the receiver's hands and fall the incomplete. incomplete. Hey, that's a pretty good throw right there. 
receiver once again had a step. Yep, that's going to be Cole Turner, the intended receiver, tight end. He was listed in the preview, the preseason article yeah. there. He's a good-looking kid. Sure is. I think they listed him at 6'5". Got him 6'4 on here, 6'4", 200. When you got kids like that, it's not a bad idea to throw it to them. Right. It's fourth down. Fourth down right here. Look to go to the pass again. Got to watch out for the screen. Got to be aware of everything right here. Blitz look again from the linebackers. Quarterback flushed out of the pocket. This one completed to Turner. Gets a big block and eventually cut down. And that's going to be enough for a first down. And the pass is complete to number 88, Cole Turner from the Dragons. You know, that was good poise from the quarterback right there because he was under fire. He was under big pressure. So here we go. Under a minute left to go. Redwater lines up quickly. First and 10. Johnson with the back behind him. He's going to hand it off to him. He's looking for room around the left side. Cuts up field. Lowers his shoulder. Stays in bounds. Looks like young man probably should have yeah, ran. Clock will stop Major just for a second to set the, the chains. And Redwater driving here in Pewit Territory. Looking to tighten this thing up just a bit. And number 12, Tyrone Cobb. Johnson takes the snap. He's going to spike this one. And we have time on the field called by the Bramus. So after the spike, it's going to be second down. Under 30 seconds left to go. Redwater gaining a little confidence, a little momentum. I think, think what I'm thinking is too, especially you know, Coach Mason probably knows it too. You got to be, you got to be heads up here on defense. Right. Got to be heads up. They're going to have something here in the bag. Right. You know, they're going to reach down for something. Could be a screen, could be a reverse pass, double pass type of situation. Yeah. Something like that. And a lot of times too, when you're in a situation where a coach doesn't have a timeout, he's going to have maybe two called. Right. Right. Yeah, he should have. Let's see if this defense can stiffen up here in the red zone. Keep them out. Who do we got in there on the front there? We got McGee, Bird, Kelly. Well, if that wind was blowing night, JB, it'd be cool up here. It is cool with a uh, whew. Yeah. I think we're probably down close to 40 tonight right now, ain't we? We're getting close. So here we go. H back and a tight end in. Two receiver split. Johnson. Sets up the throw. He's going to throw it over on his right side, and that one's going to be broken up incomplete. Amari coming over and knocking him down. You know, I think his receiver was traveling inside, and he was still able to break on that ball right there. He's seen it. Nice 19 up. seconds left to go in the half. Nice heads up play by Amari. Third and 10. Quarterback and the head coach over here trying to get the play in. This one could be tight coming out of the huddle. They're going out to hurry. They don't have a timeout either, so got to line it up quickly. Two receivers split to the top of the screen. Johnson takes the snap. He's going to roll to his right. He has to step up. Pressure in his face. Barely gets this one off. Slung out of bounds. And that's going to fall incomplete. He ran right into his own lineman there in the backfield. Well, that was Bird right there, yeah, bull rushing the tackle right, right. there, putting and pressure in his face. Complete. After that incompletion, of course, it's going to bring up fourth down. Fourth down with 13 seconds left. Let's see what Redwater calls right here. Be interesting. Got to go to the end zone, don't you? Got to. Four receivers out wide. Pistol formation. Johnson drops back. He's going to heal it to the back of the end zone, and that one's going to be caught. Intercepted. Amari Johnson. Are they going to call him in? Yeah, he can. And it. give it to him right there. Interception right. by Amari Johnson. You Mr. Know. Try me if you want. You know Amari had to be yeah, licking, by number 11, licking his chops over there, seeing number 88 out there on his side. He knew that's where they're going to go. They'll be tied in over there. You're exactly right about that. Yeah. You're exactly right about that. Amari knew it was coming at him, I figure. Nice play. But out of all, out of, all of our secondary, that's not who I want to throw at. One, that's not the one you throw at. No, sir. 
Guess we'll just take that knee here, JB. Yeah, take this one on in the half. So overall, a really well played first half from the Pewitt Bramus. Minus the one score you give up, but with some of the twos in there, you're going to give up some of that. Right. Senior night right here, halfway over. Yeah. And that's half time, folks. So Pew at least 34 to All 6 right. over Redwater. What was that? gentlemen, the Redwater Independent School District proudly presents for the first half of your halftime entertainment, the award-winning Redwater Dragon Marching Band. The Dragon Band is led on the field by junior drum major Macy Calhoun. performed at the UIL State Marching Championships in San Antonio, qualifying for finals and bringing home seventh place in the state of Texas. Tonight, the band will be performing the final performance of their 2021 competition show, A Land That I Heard Of.
direction of Jay Sutton, assisted by Anna Sutton, Donald Myers, Devin Sipes, and Paul Pugh's own Megan Samaniego. Young majors, Macy Calhoun, band captain is Tanner Purefoy. This week's section of the week, the pit crew. We would like to thank the Dragon Band Boosters and the Band Backers for all their continued support of the program. Also, thanks to the Gold Corporate Sponsors, Coleman Motors, Leadwell Office Solutions, McMillan Tree Service, Texarkana Emergency Center, and Wiley Calhoun Company. As well as the Platinum Sponsors, Genesis Prime Care, and Hope Auto. Go Dragons! Consolidated Independent School District proudly presents the Pewitt Blaze and Blue Brahma Band. The 
directors for this evening are David Waschok and James Waddell. The color guard instructor is Jax Newman. The title of tonight's show is Of Cinder and Time. The drum majors are Kimberly Martin and Ismail Casas. The color guard captain is Krista Bigelow. And now, the award-winning Pewitt Blazing Blue Brava Band.
overall band students of the week are Rashawn Allen, Gavin Bigelow, Deanna Castillo Escobar, Hannah Harper, and Aiden Weaver. The most improved band members of the week are Rashawn Allen, Gavin Bigelow, Deanna Castillo Escobar, Hannah Harper, and Aiden Weaver. Guard members of the week are Rashawn Allen, Gavin Bigelow, Deanna Castillo Escobar, Hannah Harper, and Aiden Weaver. Section of the week is our absolutely, amazingly, wonderfully, splendiferously awesome senior section. The directors would like to thank the parents, the band booster club, the school board, our administrators, our community, our band managers, and our faculty for their support. As we get set to resume second half here, Redwater's going to receive the opening kickoff. Ooh, ready to get them earphones back on them ears. Getting cool. Yes, sir. Well, JB, one half left. One half left. 24 minutes left. Game time for these seniors here tonight. Yes, sir. Here you know, the once again. Let's see how well we can close this one out. Need to. And back deep for the Dragons. Hodge is set to kick it off. Jackson Minner and 21, Marquise Jones. That 20 Minner, he's been a he's been a playmaker yeah, for him tonight. He's a baller. Be careful he's kicking it to him. Looks like he may get his hands on this one again. Nope. They fielded right about the 20-yard line, turned up field. Tackled just short of the 40-yard line. 25, Ryder Gibson. And number 10, Carson Bowman for the Dragons on the reception of the kick from the kickoff. Foot on the gas right here, man. Number 51, Isaac Hodges on the tackle for the Braves. Sets up yes, uh, the Dragons first and 10. And it looks like we've got the majority of the starters out here on defense. McGee's in there at the nose. Kelly and Bird at the defensive ends. Hodges and Green and Mayo. Along with Ryder Gibson out here on the edge. So here we go. Two receivers to the far side. First and 10 for the Dragons. Brody Johnson, that quarterback, takes the snap. He's going to hand it off to Minner. Looks for room over on the right side. Six, Jack Morris up with making tackle. Number 20, Jackson Minner, the ball carrier for the Dragons. Tackle made by our number six for the Braves, Jack Morris. 
one of those seniors out there. Yes, sir. Making plays, making memories. Making memories. It's going to bring up second and eight. Johnson with the back behind him in the pistol. He's going to hand it off to him up the middle. He's going to drive forward for a gain of a couple of yards. Pretty good surge by the Redwater offensive line there. Head the ball carrier, number eight, Caleb Gibson on the Dares. For the Dragons. Third down right here could be a chance for a pass and another takeaway for this Pewitt defense. Right. Two by two formation, pistol. 88 split to the bottom of the screen down here. Bad snap handled by Johnson. Rolls out to his right, and that one's going to be intercepted by Joey Green. Puts on the brakes over on the sideline. Burst out of a tackle, and another, and eventually pushed out of bounds. And Pewitt's going to take over at about the 26-yard line. Well, another one of them. He threw it right to our guy, JB. He sure was. Bad snap and then made him hurry it up. And we was getting pretty good fire on him. He just let it go. Good job for Joey Green to stay in bounds right. there. Yeah, fought hard, didn't he? Got a good return out of it. Shoe came off there at the end. Looks like he's going to stay in the offensive huddle. He's going to get rewarded and get to play a little offense. So another takeaway by this Bulls defense. First and ten. Green hands it off to Joey Green. Might as well give it back to you. Keep the momentum going. Like you say, he gets rewarded with a carry there to start this drive off. You know, you look at a kid like him. We've talked about him from last year to this year right here. He's done a nice job in his senior campaign. Yes, sir. You know, You're giving it all he's got. Having to step up, play inside linebacker most of the season. Yeah. Tough task right there. Right. Tall order, but he's answered the bell. You know, learning a new, a new defense for, you know, third or fourth year in a row. It's like Jack Morris is going to check in for him at the halfback spot. Johnson comes in motion. He's going to hand it off up the middle to Bird. He'll be tripped up for no gain. Yeah, number two, James Bird, the ball carrier for the Bravens. Short gain up the middle. Yeah, Tavian Brown checks into the, into the ball game. The Dragons, Malcolm Brown. Third down here for the Bulls. Perry and Johnson are split out wide. Green's going to hand it off to Bird up the middle. Drives his way forward, and I don't believe he got a first down. No, sir, a little short. Yeah, number two, James Bird with a short gain up the middle there. Under nine minutes left to go in the third quarter. Fourth down for the Bulls offense. No way we see a long field goal attempt right here. I wouldn't think. Yeah, Wasson just almost got a 60-burger at half. Mm. 58 nothing at half. We talk about the top of this region. It's going to be tough. Oh, man. Yeah, top four top four top seeds in the region there. Fourth down. Johnson goes in motion. Green's going to hand it off to Bird over on the left side, and he's going to have it after that attempt right there. Good, strong run there by James Bird. Top four in the region, though, like you say, you're going to have Newton, West Rusk, Wascom, and Dangerfield. And Dangerfield. Yeah, any of them would be a hard out. It would be a hard out for anybody. You start here in our district in the county there, Dangerfield, they just got – they just – they almost out-athlete anybody they play. That's, yeah, you're already behind the eight ball when you play them just because you're out-athlete. Hayden Green fakes off his fullback looking for a block from Tavian. He gets it, lowers his shoulder, turns his way upfield, and eventually pushed out of bounds. Right, stop on the whistle over right now. They never actually got him down. Yeah, number one, Hayden Green with quarterback keeper. Yeah, so you draw a danger field, you're almost out athleted, like you say, by everybody. By Newton, of course, they're coming off some of the deep Brown. playoff runs they've had. We beat them last year, of yeah, course, but they've got that all-state running back over there, Gaston, you know. Yes, sir. <laughs> He's a load. He'll be a handful, I'm afraid. USC commit. Yes, sir. West Rusk, they've had bright spots here this season. Yeah, and you know, of course, we, we seen them last year, and they were awful young. 
Amari takes the handoff, tries to jump cut middle of the defense, be eventually wrestled down. Looks like he's going to be tackled for a loss of a couple of yards. And number 11, Myrie Johnson, the ball carrier. Them Redwater kids are fired up down there, JB. Gets caught in the backfield for a loss. And then, of course, you talk about that four team right there. You know, Wascom just how much success that they've had. Oh, yeah. Wascom's you know, been a powerhouse for years. You talk about the way they run that triple option right there. I mean, that's tough. Yeah. Tough, you know, tough, tough. The trouble we have with Prairie Land with the option, it's not going to be good playing Wascom with their option. It's going to be a tall order. Yes, sir. Better hold, hold on to the ball the whole game. So here we go, third down. Green goes under center. Play action pass. Pressure in his face. He's going to have to roll out. Looking for a receiver in the back of the end zone. Makai Perry makes the adjustment. Throw and catch. It looks like he come away with that. That's going to be touchdown. Paul Hewitt, touchdown. Makai Perry, laundry on the field. That's probably going to be the late, that extras, or is that going to be a hold? Green, touchdown. Nice hey, that was a nice throw by your quarterback on the run. All the way around right there. Good job from Hayden Green to avoid pressure, keep the play alive, and an even better job adjusting on the route right there from Makai Perry. Right. He ran just a, a go down the seam and right. was able to cut back to the corner of the end zone and come up with the catch. Yeah, he went, he went the direction his quarterback was rolling. Big play right there. Let's see if it stands. Dead ball foul. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Bramus. Hey, I'm watching it. Huh. I guess I'll take that on the kickoff, JB. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The touchdown should still stand. Looks like they're going to have to run the scoreboard back. Looks like Hodges is going to set up for the extra point. So the touchdown is going to stand. You know, I told you I developed a little relationship with Makai Perry right there. I always like to joke with him, wide receiver number one. Right. The snap is back in the... Operation just wasn't good from the get-go oh, right there, and a failed the extra point attempt. And that's kind of what you expect for a team that goes for two every time. Right. It looked like we hadn't done it before, don't it? Or so more. the score is going to be 40-6 to six halfway through the third quarter. Like I say, nice hookup from your quarterback Hayden Green and Makai Perry there. Little air bulls tonight here on Senior Night. Yes, sir. One of those games, JB. We still can't get enough out there. A lot of green grass right there in the middle of the I'm return. There thinking. Hodges is going to get a hold to this one. He fielded right about the 35-yard line. Looks like that's Minner again. Lowers his shoulder. Hey, that young man's a player. He's just a sophomore, I think, on the roster. Game number 10 for the Dragons on the return. Carson Bowman. 5'8", 155. He's had himself a ball game. Sir. I think nobody told them the success they had. They were handing that young man the football. You know, all that, all that slinging around, it's all fun, you know. But 
Yeah, you used to say it's 20 right up over on the right side. It takes us back to about the Atlanta game, right, where the big fullback 32 is, you know, hitting us for 10 yards a clip. Trade on the tackle. Well, we better save him for defense. That's what Atlanta was doing, I guess. Yeah, bringing in that five wide, saying you might want to hand it to that big kid right there. So here we go, first and 10 for the Dragons. Ball right at midfield. Johnson takes a snap. He's going to hand it off to his back mentor and be stopped for a loss. Jack Morris coming up from a safety spot. Is that Casey Kelly in there at the D-line yeah. spot on the assist? Mm -hmm. Yeah, number 20, Jackson Minter, the ball carrier for the Dragons. Loss on the plate. Tackle made by number five, Casey Kelly. Second and long for the Dragons. Taking their time a little bit in the huddle. Yeah. Two receivers to the bottom of the screen. Johnson takes the snap. He's going to oh. hand it off to his running back, Minner. Looks for a seam. Strip attempt there by Joey Green. Yeah, number 20, once again, Jackson Minner is the ball carrier for the Dragons. 55 Jordan. That will be by number four, four, Joey Green. You know, that's what I meant to tell you. These last two defensive possessions, McGee, he's been at trotting out there with good energy, yeah, like you say. Hey, look, he, 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 he still about got his jersey yanked off of him where they was holding him. He's getting it back on now. He's been the first one lining up out there, and he's fired up. Yeah. Another one of those seniors one of those leaving seniors. his mark out there. Yes, sir. Looks like he didn't want to come out of the game. Right, uh -uh. So here we go, third down. Jet motion for the Dragons. Quarterback takes the snap, fakes it, Big rolls McGee to the left. Again. He's going to eventually throw it and be caught, completed, and pursued by a host of defenders, but after he picks up the first down. Yeah, and the pass is complete to number five, Austin Kennedy, for a first down for the Dragons. Kennedy on his first reception of the night right there. by number 10, Noah Mayo for the Bramus. Looks like we had it covered up well initially. Right. McGee was getting good fire on the quarterback. He was just able to keep it alive long enough for his receiver to work adjust open, yeah. and work his way open. Exactly right. So a new set of downs. First and ten. Johnson takes it. He's going to hand it off to Minner and be stonewalled right at the line of scrimmage. Was that Joey Green? Yeah, number 20, Jackson Minner, the ball carrier. Again, the Man, he met him in the hole something ferocious there. Yeah, and met in the hole there by number four, Joey Green, for a loss on the play. That's one of those right there you put on tape and say, it was a form tackle right here, gentlemen. Right. Yes, sir. Hit him square in his chest, wrap him up. And drove him backwards. Interesting from the spread attack, quarterbacks running in the play. A lot of times these spread teams have a wristband or some kind of call sheet. Yeah. Throws it over here in the flats, juggled for a moment, and eventually yeah, falls incomplete. incomplete. Brings up third and goal. Two men on the coverage there, Perry and Hodges, doing a nice job covering it up. I didn't see who it was, JB. Somebody got a pretty good fire on the quarterback. He was pulling grass out of his face mask when he got up then. After that one, it's going to bring up third down for the Dragons. Six minutes. Yes, sir. Makai Perry brings the play in. They haven't got it spotted yet, have they? We broke the huddle 25 yards behind the ball. Well, a white hat here, he's, he's, he's discussing it with him. He said, look here, you walk it off. No, I walk it off. No, you walk it off. Somebody needs to get it walked off. He said, let me have the ball and you guys walk it off. Right. Finally going to spot us just outside the 20, right about the 23-yard line or so. First and 10 for this Bulls offense once again. Green hands it off to Bird, the fullback. Power his way forward, and I imagine that's going to be the yeah, last play of the quarter. The ball carry again for the Bramos with a runner right up the middle. So James Bird showing more of the same on this drive, lowering his shoulder and powering forward. Yeah, 12, yes, sir. Thompson, and as we look to go into the fourth quarter here, Pewitt leads 40-13 to 13 over Redwater.
But I... <laughs> So here we go, second and six for the Bulls offense. Looking to put another score on the board here. Green hands it off to James Bird once again. And the way things are going here in the second half, we may get a heavy dose of James Bird on the dive. Yes, sir. Tackle made by number 22 for the Dragons, John Collier. Here on the defensive side of the ball. defense, too. See what Redwater has on their mind, JB. I still see McGee out there at nose. Looks like he's getting all the snaps he can. Yeah, he wants them all, JB. Yes, sir. Can you blame the young man? I love it. I love it. So here we go. Johnson hands it off to Nairns in the backfield, and it'll be snuffed out. Well defended by the Bulls defense. Good work up front by the Bulls defense line. Hawkins in there deep in the Hawkins action. And, and four, Joey Green. And the ring, Caleb Nairs, uh, the ball carrier for the Dragons. And number 20, Kendrick Hawkins. And number four, Joey Green on the tackle for the Bramas. A few subs in on the defensive backfield. Quarterback steps oh. up. Eventually sack, ball came out, fumble. Did we recover it? No, sir. No signal yet. They're going to let him keep it. You know, JB, 20 Hawkins could have cleaned him up there, and he just shoved him. And we have timeout on the official timeout on the field. We got somebody hurt. It looks like they're cramping. They got a lineman over there like he's cramping. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have an injury Hopefully on the young field. man's all right. Yes, sir. Yeah, quarterback Johnson just went to go step up that time, and pressure went in his face, forcing yeah. him to fumble the football. You know, as the score starts to get like it is, we've had some substitutions. Yeah. Some not. How much longer do you play quarterback? You know. Got to get him out of there, don't you? It's getting about that time. We've got next week to look forward to here. And I think that's what we've seen so far is, too. You know, that's that's veteran coordinator Reggie Cummer right there. He hadn't called any quarterback runs. No. So I think he's trying to keep his quarterback out of harm's way he's best he can. Him, keep him clean. Brenner right Fenton is here for number 15. Brody Johnson, he's up and walking around. That was a quarterback. It was the quarterback. So now, interesting, it's going to force a quarterback change. Was it third down? Looks like they're running back Nairns. He's going to take over and play some quarterback. A little confusion. Good. They have too many in the huddle? No, the he's Bulls running back on. He's standing up, JB. Is that that proud look right there? It looks yeah. like we're bringing that on third down again. Everybody's standing up. Going to bring the pressure. Snap. This is going to be blown dead. Yeah, blown blown dead. Are they going to call a false start? Are they going to call us to the neutral zone? You'd think it would be a false start. No. I no. Think so. Offsides. And we have offsides against the Bramas. <laughs> a little too excited, wasn't he? It's frustrating, you know, because when you're if you're doing that stand-up kind of prowl look right there, you want everybody to be on their toes and be ready to go. But you got to be disciplined. Third and long, right here. Looks like Johnson checks back into the ball game. Sure does. He's going to hand it off to Minner, his running back, and be hit at the line of scrimmage for no gain. 51 Hodges, 55 McGee, 20 Hawkins. To bring up fourth down for the Dragons. I assume they're going to punt this one away. Good thing. In the rain, Caleb Nair is on the ball carrier for the Dragons. Caught in the backfield. With the score is like it is right now, you're not going to get any of Mari Johnson return. No, you're not going to get a fake, are you? Nah. 
Looks like we're going to stay lined up and conservative and make sure they get it off. It's going to be a high tumbling punt and take a bounce backwards, but eventually fielded right at the 46-yard line. And the punt for the Dragons, number 10, Carson Bowman. So right under eight minutes left to go in the ball game. First and 10. Hewitt looking to finish out this last home game strong. Now we see some subs running in there. Yes, sir. Like About you say, Amari out of there. Looks like Edie Thomas checked in. James Bird at the fullback spot. Cobbins comes in at the quarterback. There it is right there. First and ten. Let's see if he gets a quarterback key. He's going to send Eddie in motion. Oh. And he's going to toss it to him, looking to get a block from his quarterback. Nice little wrinkle right there. Sure was. Little reverse pitch out to the tailback there. And number 24, Eddie Thomas, the ball carrier for the Ramos. I like to see his quarterback trying to get out there and get a block. By number 33, David. Two seniors right, right there Eber. playing for each other. For the Dragons? Yes, sir. Gage Smith is going to bring the play in. Second and eight. Taking care of business. Yes, sir. Cobbins comes to the line. He's going to hand it off to his fullback, James Bird. Going to be grabbed around his legs. Hmm. 66 Wilson and 14 Smith. Yeah, number two, James Bird. Good ball carry. Was that 25 they took advantage of? Yeah. <laughs> going down the field. Third and short. Give him about a 25-yard ride down the field. Tackle made by number 55 for the Dragons. I want to see Cobbins Nathan keep Morgan. Me too. I want to see Cobbins come over on this end right here. Fake it off his fullback. Cobbins goes under center. He's going to hand it off up the middle of the fullback. Little extras and pointing there, as my buddy Lance come, likes to say. There come the flag. And up here, James Bird, the ball carry once again. There's flags on the, on the play. After the number we've had so far, I expect them, they might bring both teams together here and get that cut out. Yeah, it's been kind of chippy, you know it. Now, interesting right here, you pointed to me, Kedrick checks in. And Tavian, is he looking to come out? So, yeah, with Bird and Kedrick in there, yeah. that's going to be an interesting backfield line. I think the 15 was right here. That's why he come out. I think the 15 was on him. He explained to Coach Dorsey what was going on. It's like you say, they're not going to get the first one. No, never use it. Very rarely do they. They're always going to get the reaction. Well, have, I'm not sure they're even going to get what's going on here. Six and a half minutes left to go in the ball game. Well, this crew, they sure do take their time talking about it. I guess they're getting it figured out. They're getting it figured out. They could be letting that clock roll while they were figuring it out, though. For me, it's just a little bit of the body language, a little bit of shrug, a little bit of... Yeah. A little sweet Caroline going on, JB. Up, up, up. Coaches made their way out of the booth. This one right here is well in hand, all but wrapped up. Yes, sir. Besides, well, but besides the penalty, oh. JB, we can't get the penalty figured out. That's got to be Redwater's head coach, the one walking down here in front of the official. You see? Yeah. You think yeah. that's him? Yeah, he's been the one calling the offensive plays, I believe. That's what I was thinking. And it's unsportsmanlike conduct against the Bramas. I wonder how hard that was to figure out. Yeah. Something we need to pay, be, be conscious of, JB. You get that unsports, second unsportsmanlike, you get kicked out. You miss the first half of next week. Well, now they moved the chain gang, too, so I guess they gave us the first down and then. Okay. Um, all right, here we go. First and 10 from the 40. 
Cobbins goes under center. Looks for his fullback. Nobody's there. He'll be eventually wrapped up. That's a little bit of that miscommunication right there. Yeah, that's some of them twos in there. And yeah, number 12, Tyrone Cobbins gets caught in the backfield. What, what do we have right there? Did we have Hawkins in at the fullback and then Bird at the halfback? I think so. And and that's what that's like you say that's going to be expected when when that's the first time you've seen them line up at those spots together yeah. with Cobbins at quarterback. I mean you know. So this is going to be second and seventeen. Coach Cumberland here he was talking to his quarterback Cobbins so let's see what kind of play call we get. Hmm. Bird at the halfback. Cobbins is going to give it to Hawkins up the middle. Breaks out, cuts to the outside, and he's going to have more than enough for a first down there all in one play. Mm-hmm. Hey, does he look good at half fullback or what? Yes, sir. And number 20, Diedrich Hawkins with a first down run for the Bravers. Anybody that followed us, they know. If, if you watched us early in the season, we had a couple of scrimmages with mismatching jerseys, and we couldn't figure out who that was. Yeah. We were giving him the wrong call, but he was still showing out. It didn't take us long. No, sir. So here we go. Hawkins at fullback. Birds at the halfback. Cobbins is going to give it to him once again. Well, ball is out. Ball come out. That's that inexperience right there. They're going to point. Red water the other way. Hate to see that right there. Yep. Especially for me and you, you know, we've been pulling for that young man to get in there and get some carries. And we got a young man yeah, down. Yeah, we do have an injured player on the field. Hopefully, he's able to get up. And yes, sir. Hopefully, he's all right. JB, I wish we knew more about Troop. Yeah, I do too. We tried to look at some of their scores, you know, comparing them to their district opponents. It's a little tough to make out, you know, what's what. Right. I think a little bit of scouting report on them, right? They're going to be running spread stuff, I believe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are. Throwing quick passes. Got a few athletes out there on the, on the edges. like Kedrick's able to get up. Good to see that young man get up on his own power. Hopefully think everything's all right with him. Yes, sir. Brandon right. fans in for number 20, Kedrick Hawkins. Has he walked off the field? Boy, this has been a long second half, JB. Yeah, sure has, especially for a blowout game. Right. Go Johnson back in at quarterback, takes the snap, throws it into the flats, caught by Turner, breaks a tackle, and he'll have enough for a gain of 15 yards or so. Number nine, Comer in on the stop for the Bulls. Yeah, the re- pass was received by number 88, Cole Turner, for the Dragons. And the tackle made by number nine, James Comer. Under five minutes left to go in the ball game. Pewitt leads 47 to 13 over Redwater. John looks over on the left side, completed to Turner again. Ball comes out late. That could be a fumble. I believe it is. That's going to be turnover. Paul Pewitt football. Just Gage, like that, how fast things turn. Yeah, Gage Smith with the strip, and then James Comer with the recovery. And number nine, James Comer. I see that young man making a play tonight. Yes, sir. Created by number 14, Gage Smith. Well, Mr. Comer is fired up down there, JB. Sure he is. Everybody's fired up for him, too. You got to love that right there. Yes, sir. Got to love that. He's a senior, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Got to love that. So, Bird and Hawkins back in the backfield. Cobbins is just going to sneak this one. 
<laughs> Hawkins shoved him for three yards. <laughs> That's one way to do it. Yes, sir. JV Arthur 28-24. There's still 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter in that one. Ball game right there. Yes, sir. Pretty good game. Looks like Comer's going to get to bring the play in here. He's going to get some more playing time on this night. He better catch his air. Three and a half minutes left. Last one up here at the Brahma Dome. Yes, sir. I was waiting so anxiously to get back up here. Now it's already over with. It's been a pretty fun season, though, all oh, in yeah, all. Man. I can't complain. Cobbins calls out the cadence. Thomas goes in motion. He's going to hand it off to him. Looking for room on the right Oop. side. He'll be Oop. stood up. Easy, Eddie. Number 24, Eddie Thomas. Uh, the play, loss on the uh, – oh, excuse me, loss on the play. Brother Tim getting tongue-tied down there. He's been working it tonight. Yes, sir. Under three minutes left to go in the ball game. Third and ten for the Bulls. Gage Smith's going to bring this one in. Now, we know Coach cumro has been real conservative here, especially here late. I doubt you're going to see play action. No. But are you going to see Cobbins keep it around the edge? No. Yep. No. No. He's going to hand it off to Hawkins up the middle. Hey, if he'd have kept it, he'd have been gone. Tackled right about the 45-yard line. Need to let Tyrone keep it here. Okay. Senior, let him get one in. Number 20 for the Bramos, Kedrick Hawkins. Brings up fourth down for the Bramos. Good to see them young men don't get much playing time getting the play right here. Ten. That's what I was just thinking, too. Come you know, and bring the play in. Right. You know, they've worked hard in practice all year, too, and stayed late with everybody else in the weight room and everything, too. Sometimes they don't get to play a snap. No, you got to have them to make everything go around, though. Yes, sir. It's going to be false start on us. Or delay. False start. Surely. And we have false start against the Ramos. <laughs> it's going to back us up a little bit further right at midfield looks like we're going to punt it JB that's probably the right call JB if I'm not mistaken this will be the first punt and we didn't punt none last week I don't believe we didn't punt any last week versus Prairie Land we punted against Dangerfield we punted against Dangerfield First time in almost eight quarters, though. Yeah. So here we go. Play clock's dead. Got, Got to take a timeout. I'll take a timeout. And we have a timeout call on the field by the Bravers. You know, that one's frustrating right there because you want to punt it, and then by the time the ball is downed, probably bounces in their territory. That could be another 10 or 15 seconds right yeah. there just – well, you know, it's, it's hard to get the right amount of people out there when you got all the subs in. And that, that's, that's a good point. Don't know who's supposed to be where or what's supposed to be what. It's a good point, especially when you go from having so many twos in the huddle, like you say, to right. punt team. But Harmony finished off line on a 24 nothing, JB. So Harmony's going to find their way into the fourth seed. They're going to draw Dangerfield. Sorry, Harmony. Good luck. In number 45, Aiden Weaver in the punt for the Bramus. Weaver back to punt, isn't all Kelly. Excuse me, number five, Cason Kelly. He turned. <laughs> he turned the show, brother Tim, didn't he? <laughs> sure did. This is going to be a spiral punt. Hit over on the Redwater sideline. Scooped up on the run. He's got a head full of steam. Stepped out of bounds prior to the 30-yard line. He had a head full of steam right there. He looked like he was going to make a decent return out of it. Got a minute left, baby. One minute left. And number 10, Case Carson Bowman on I struggled, the reception. I struggled, I struggled the through it, JB. It was a struggle for me. It's eight now. You kept me going, though. Appreciate senior, it. Senior night. Senior night, senior man. Senior night, baby. Making memories right here, yes, man. Sir. Yes, sir. And all around the Bulls played a pretty good football game. Yep, sure did. Sure did. A couple of scores, you know, we wouldn't like to give up, but, you know. Johnson takes a snap, rolls over on his far side, looking to chunk this one deep. This is going to fall incomplete, well covered by Amari Johnson. 
And the pass goes incomplete. It's going to be hard to run away from Lamar. Second down. No, that's, that's not good. Dragons? You're not going to make a living doing it. No. Well, JB, you see a run in us coming up? Well, that's an interesting thing. Uh, me and you, we watched this team here for two years. There's times we look really well. And it looks like we could be a team that could run, you know, three or four playoff games. Pass incomplete, intended for 88 Turner. Just mostly for me and you, you know, we're, we're homers, we're bulls like we are, but you just, when you take a step back at it, it's just the region's just so tough. Right. Region three, I would almost bet you, I'd almost bet you a $100 bill there's going to be a state champion come out of there. I would, I would say the same thing. Out of Wascom, Dangerfield being a sleeper. Yeah. West Rusk and Newton. You know, Newton's got, probably got a bad taste in their mouth after early exit last year. Probably the first time they've exited in the second round in a long time. Yep. Some confusion in the backfield. They barely get the handoff off. 20 Hawkins with the stop. Young man playing a well of a second half here, isn't he? Yeah, number 20, Kendrick Hawkins on the tackle for the Ramos. He's going to bring up fourth down already for the Dragons. And if that's the case right here, I don't expect to see another play. Are they going to do snap it again? I wouldn't expect it. Let me remind you as you line it up. There's any trash it is senior night. Pick it up. Throw the trash cans down at the bottom of the stairs. Yeah. The school district would this is going to be a Hail Mary. Any trash around you, please help pick up trash. Three, two, one. Johnson throws it over on the left side. It's going to fall incomplete, and that's going to be your ball game. Pewitt wins on senior night, 47 to 13. Handling business. Yeah, that's a ball game, folks. And as we say, Thank next week, look to join us. It's for real next week, baby. He's More than likely, it's like you say, when all is settled and done, we're going to have true at Spring Hill on Friday. We'll have to get our scouting report on true. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, JB. You know, like we said, this, this Bulls team's got capability of making that run, you know. You know, last year they surprised me. I think even you to some extent right here, you know, with the win over Newton. You right. found yourself in the third-round playoff game versus the Legion Fields, and you're fourth and inches away from going to the quarterfinals. To play Washington. And that's just how it goes like that, you right. know. Right, right. Uh, it can happen. Just that easy. It's We've seen stranger things, you know. Pointed on both ends, baby. Takes crazy bounces. I think Redwater Coach may have had a conversation with his group to be good sports, shall I say, when we shook hands, maybe. All in all, really fun regular season, though. Yes, sir, JB. I've enjoyed it. I sure have, too. Yeah. Big thanks to Coach Sib and everybody yes, up sir. here that's a part of it. Yes, sir. And we look forward to seeing you all next week. Good night. God bless and go Bulls.